What do you do for a living, Dad? You're retired now. What did you used to do? Grave digging. <laughs> oh, get him out. <laughs> you evil bastard, you. I used to work over the crematorium. I used to sweep up the ashes and send them out to Africa to the cannibals as ready bread. <laughs> and did you work, Mum? Nah. Just brought up a family. How many did you have? Six. Did you really? <laughs> Kim Hell, well, they all weren't dead what you was burying, was they? <laughs> Kim Hell, he deserves a knighthood. He's probably got one, I won't wear the bastard. And, uh, <laughs> Kim, oh, well, it's lovely to have a little chat to you. It's nice to fucking talk to people. A lot of people don't talk to me. I don't know, Kim, why they think I'm a piss taker. <laughs> it's about a coloured couple walking through the jungle. Oh, zippity do da, zippity here. My, oh, my, what a potsy old dear. And in the distance, you could hear fucking drums. <laughs> Is that Lily? Lily, I got a mind to give you a right large portion of her mad. Is that you, 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 he said, why not? She said, well, a snake could come along and bite my ass. He said, well, you are a nuisance. I got the horn now. She said, man, you'll find somewhere where it's flat and quiet and you can have as much as you like. He said, I'm not just a player. You'll come with me. So he's walked to this clearing, came 300 yards wide. And in the middle of it was a single knotty railway track. And he's walked to the middle, blowing cloths off, He's laid her, laid her down, he's put a red on one sleeper, back on another sleeper, arse on another sleeper. She was 22 foot long. <laughs> so he's knelt down beside her and he's got hold of one of her tits and gone, Oh, Lily, these are lovely titties, Lily. <laughs> Look at that nipple there. Can you get rid of your one and these at all, Libby? And he's gone, oh, Lily, look at that lovely Jack and Danny there. <laughs> so he's climbed in between her legs and, 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 and he's given her some long, slow strokes. Sort of. <laughs> and he's getting the occasional <laughs> hair lock. So he's picked her legs up, he's put one on one shoulder, one on the other shoulder. And he's rolled her up onto the arch of her back. And he's grabbed either side of the track and he's thrown home some hard, forceful strokes. With his nuts a-clanging on her airy. Brazils! Well, as he's banging away in the distance, he can hear the sound of a trium. So he picks up a bit of speed to beat the trim. Well, the trim driver, he see this ass on the line and he give him a touch of the whistle with a... His ass was like a fiddler's elbow. Well, a train has come to a scream and stands there, but... <laughs> now, it stopped with his crash bar on this bloke's harass. It's not stopped him, it's just shortened his strokes. Well, a train driver, he jumped on and he went on. He said, what do you think you am doing? He said, you can see what I am can doing. He said, didn't you hear my whistle? He said, man, you was making enough noise to wake up can dead. He said, well, why didn't you get off of my track? He said, you listen to me, man. She's a common. I'm a common. And you's a common. And you's the only silly bastard with brakes. <laughs> Thank you.
And the other night, drunk as a sack I was. So drunk, I find myself at the bottom of the stairs, didn't even know I've got there. <laughs> but when you're pissed, you talk to yourself. And there is a reason for that, because you get the right answers. <laughs> so I'm at the bottom of the stairs, right, she is going to get a portion tonight. I am not having a J Arthur. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, right, wait a second. I stripped off start, but stopped snoring. Thought, right, really going to give it to her. <laughs> so you can picture this: drunk as a sack, stark naked, in my hands. I didn't kick it as I walked up the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> and I've mounted the stairs, <laughs> got to the top of the stairs, found out I was on a bus. <laughs> so, this constable. <laughs> <laughs> He came off the pavement like a rocket. Wallop! He stopped me dead. I hit my head on the window. I thought, you scatty git. I could have run you over. I was moving. Well, I was in second gear. I must have been doing 20, 30. I mean, I was on a dipped headlight as well. I thought, you git. And I could have bent my steering wheel. I was leaning on it. And he was holding me back. And I thought, you git. So I dipped the clutch and put the handbrake on at the same time. I thought, he's not going to push me back. Not now I've got this far. <laughs> and these coppers are programmed. You know these coppers are programmed. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, that's Andy. He's pissed and all. I'm sitting here on my own unless he's talking to me wheels. <laughs> no, you've got to be careful with the police now. Once he started, I thought, it's obvious he wants to talk to me. So I turned the engine off. Well, after the pre-ignition has stopped, <laughs> he walked down the side of my robin, stuck his head straight through the driver's door window. Well, I mean, they're 50 quid a time, them windows. <laughs> he said, this is a spot check. I said, I've got two blackheads and a boil on my arse. <laughs> I thought, humour him, humour him. He said, oh, we're very funny, aren't we? He said, do you know the sequence in the traffic lights? I said, yes, I do. Red, red, amber and green. He said, well, what's next? I said, I don't know, I've normally pissed off by then. <laughs> they are, they're as thick as shit, some of them, you know. He said, right, got his book out. Anything you say will be taken down and read out in court in front of you. So I thought for a minute. I said, please, officer, don't hit me again. <laughs> now, there's a lot of people, you know, think I'm colour prejudiced, and I'm not. I mean, they could all piss off home, it wouldn't bother me. I mean, I've been to Brixton, where you can't buy oxos. You can't, they use them as barbecues. Have you ever been there? <laughs> a colour fella mugged an Irishman, and the Irishman fought like a bastard, but the colour fella got him down, gone down his pockets, he said, 20 pence. He said, you'll put up some puxy fight for 20 pence. He said, that's what you want you can have. I thought it was after the 50 quid that's in me sock. The fellow had a terrible impediment. Every time he spoke, he broke wind. Now, that is a fucking terrible impediment. And he went out shopping in Brighton. And he saw a beautiful pair of shoes in Russell and Bromley's. Now, that is a fucking dear shoe shop. Got no price on these shoes, so he's had to go in. 16-year-old girl behind the counter. He said, excuse me. <laughs> she said, yes, can I help you? He said, you've got a pair of snakeskin shoes in the side window. <laughs> he said, skin turn in, Mood. She said, it's an oddman pair. He said, can I try them on, please? <laughs> she said, yeah, can stay there. I'll get it out of the window. Dirty bastard. She tried them on. He said, they're nice, aren't they? <laughs> she said, I've got to open the door. I'm getting smelly in here. He said, how much are they? <laughs> she said, I'm frightened to tell you. You'll shit yourself. <laughs> Looking for a bit of the other, he said his bird in the doorway, he said, you on the game? She said, right, stand here getting a suntan two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> he said, how much you charge? She said, well, it's a bit quiet, six quid. He said, six quid? He said, I want to borrow it, I want to fucking buy it. <laughs> she, he said, I've got to get all the way back to fucking Brighton. Said, I've only got a couple of quid. She said, you won't get nothing for a couple of quid. I said, can I have a look at it for a couple of quid? <laughs> she said, no touching, he said, no, just a look. She said, give us a good money then. Drop the drawers, held the scarf, and sort of looking at it. He said, can I talk to it? She said, if you want to, he said, hello. 
Why, hey! She said, hold on a minute, mate. I'm going to lend you four quid. discussion to a crowd of persons such as yourself. He said, well, as you know, ladies and gentlemen, I'm an authority on sex, in particular sexual positions. Does anybody know exactly how many positions of sex there are? And the voice out the back went, uh, 72. He said, no, don't be silly around, Sammy. He said, sex in married life is a very serious thing. Keep your fucking mouth shut. It's all right. Good lad. You young man, you married? Uh, yeah, I, I, I've been married eight weeks. He said, how many positions of sex do you know? What? How many different ways do we have it? He said, yes. Oh, you know, hold on. Um, we have it. Um. <laughs> hey, he said, very good, very good. Anybody else? Uh, 72. <laughs> He said, Ram Sammy, please, keep your mouth shut. <laughs> you, sir? Yeah, I, I've been married uh, 12 years, mate, and I know 12 uh, different positions. He said, well, 12 is the national average. Anybody else? Uh, 72. <laughs> he said, now, I'm getting a fucking hump of you, Moose. Now, keep your fucking mouth shut. <laughs> you, sir, you look as though you've been married some time. 34 years, mate. There's only one way of having a bang up. <laughs> only one way. Only ever had it one way, 34 years. Would you explain to the ladies and gentlemen? Certainly. I call the old woman upstairs on a sunny afternoon. She gets her drawers on. Climbs on the bed, I climb on, and I bang away for about half an hour, 40 minutes. 73. It wouldn't bother me, I don't care. I mean, I, you're very lucky here in Manchester, or around within your area. I know you've got Moss Side, and I was over in Moss Side only the other day. Well, actually, in fact, I went to the pictures there. I thought the place was empty. <laughs> they have had to paint the chalk ice is white to stop them from biting their fingers off. Now, this is true. <laughs> They've even put the toilet doors to the floors because the limbo dance were getting hit for nothing. <laughs> and nothing's more frightening. You're sitting having a shit in a pair of feet coming off. Don't I frighten you, man. This colour fellow went walking in the jewellers, unzipped his flies and dropped his dick on the counter. Girl's gone, ah! You can't do that in here. He said, you listen to me. He said, is this a watchmaker's? She said, yes. He said, well, put a couple of hands on that. Now, <laughs> I've been to Germany. I went over there to entertain our troops, actually. And they got me a date with a German prostitute. She was blind, she was. You had to hand it to her. And I said to her, you know, I've got some walks on your arse. <laughs> She said, no, it's me prices in Braille. And, um, anyway. <laughs> what do you do for a living? Cashier. Cashier, where? A garage. A garage? Oh, that's fucking nice. <laughs> I went in the garage tonight. There's a fucking Irishman there. I said, uh, will you check the tyres? He said, certainly, sir. One, two, three, four. <laughs> and what do you do for a living? A window cleaner. A window cleaner. <laughs> I can tell you a very true story about an Irish window cleaner it was up a ladder cleaning the windows of this unmarried mother's home. And they see a young lady and they're feeding a baby on her breast. So he knocks on the window. He said, that's bloody marvellous, it is. She said, what is? He said, the way you're keeping that baby alive for the minute from the tit. <laughs> she said, what are you on about? He said, well, I was brought up in an orphanage and I've often wondered what it would be like to suck one of them. She said, you want to have a suck of this one? He said, oh, thank you very much. And he's got, he's got all of the tit. <laughs> well, she's got fruity, hasn't she? She said, do you fancy something else? He said, have you got a rush guitar? <laughs> <laughs> and what do you do for a living, see? Milkman. Mi milkman! <laughs> this milkman was delivering to this block of flats. And the woman from the fourth shore shouted out, Oi, milkman, you got half a stalk on? He said, no, nah, it's the way the wind's blowing me apron. <laughs> <laughs> Is this your wife here? Yeah. Hello, have you got any family, Mrs. Woman? How many you got? Three? See, it's getting better in sale. <laughs> Must be something in the air. <laughs> Possibly your legs. Um, <laughs> see how I have to get up? Now, I've had a bit of trouble, as it happens, with my arse. And, uh, I've been going to this doctor, and he's whopping supposedly up my arse, and I'm getting a bit suspicious. Because he's had both his hands on my shoulders. 
I don't... You talk about things happening to you. Last time I was here at the Garter, I left on a Saturday night, and I'd had a right good night as it happens, and I left here about, uh, the, the manager and myself had a right good skin for, and I, I left here about three o'clock, and it was one of those horrible days, it was pissing down a fucking rain and everything else. And I've gone out on the M6 and I'm getting hammering it. And, and I'm really going like the fucking clatters. And sort of, you know, the cars give it bleh. Well, I'm over on a fucking hard shoulder. And I don't know nothing about fucking cars when I'm getting sober. So when I'm pissed, I'm right in trouble, right, you know. And I've got the fucking bonnet up and I'm sort of putting my hands in more to keep them warm than fucking anything. And it is pissing down the rain. There's fucking water dripping down my fucking back. And this right flash bastard in a Rolls Royce pulled up. Trouble! I said, no, you prat. I like standing here at four o'clock in the morning <laughs> pissing the rain. Of course I've got in trouble. I said, do you know anything about cars? He said, no, he said, I'm a chiropodist. I said, well, give us a fucking toe then. <laughs> Teacher was in school, said, today, children, I want one of you to tell me a nice story from the Bible. Um, yes. Let me see, I can tell you a story from the Bible. I can tell you a story about David and Goliath. She said, go on then. He said, well, David was a diddy little fella, four foot tall. And he was chosen to fight Goliath, who was a fucking big giant of a man. So he thought, I'm never going to meet you. Hmm? So he talked for a little while and he put a rock in a sling and he spun it round his head and he let it go. And it hit Goliath in the middle of the head and killed him. And he got on his motorbike and pissed off home. <laughs> she said, well, you're right to an extent, but he didn't get on a motorbike. He said, he can do. She said, he can never. He said, he can do, because I read it in the Bible. She said, well, I suggest you can read it again. He said, I can well. It says in here, and when David killed Goliath, as all you could hear was the roar from his triumph. in his petrol station. He said, um, said to the young girl, he said, um, can I have a penneth of petrol? She said, a penneth of fucking petrol? Piss off, it's one man fucking 70 odd of fucking gallon and you want a fucking penneth? She said, it wouldn't fill a fucking thimble. He said, well, that's what I've got, just a fucking little thimble. Can you come out and just see where you can fill it for a penny? She said, well, we'll give it a fucking try. So they've got the gun out and sort of in this thimble. She said, that's it, give us your fucking penny. She said, what are you going to fucking do with that? He said, I'll fucking show you. So Click the top of his ring and sort of... I've had a bit of trouble at home. I don't know whether you men out there that are out on your own who've got the same philosophy in your house that I've got. I've got a philosophy here in my house that if I earn the wages, I'm entitled to a night out on my own. And last Friday, I wasn't working, so I said, to her, I'm fucking going out. So fucking out, I went. No arguments, out, I fucking went. Anyway, I got back home on Sunday. <laughs> well, you lose track of time when you're enjoying yourself, don't you? It wasn't late Sunday, it was about four o'clock Sunday morning, and I walked indoors and I was sick all over the cat. And I thought, well, I don't remember eating it. <laughs> anyway, I, I stood in the kitchen having a piss in the sink, and uh, I was there for a good 20 minutes because she'd left the tap dripping, you know, and we had a row about that and all because the sink was full up with tea leaves. I told her off about that. I said, that's a fucking filthy habit, tea leaves in the sink. Anyway. <laughs> I don't know how you women can do it, but you can generate an atmosphere even though you are fucking upstairs. It's like a fucking cloud coming down a fucking staircase. And I thought, hello, somebody's upset her. Well, when I got in the bedroom, that was when I knew she had the ump, because she's sitting up in bed chopping firewood. I thought, hello, here we can go. And as I got in, she started, where the fucking hell do you think you've been to, you dirty bastard? 
you know, talking through her nose because she's wore her mouth out, you know. And <laughs> she said, you've been getting a bit on the side. I said, why have they moved it? <laughs> she said, you're very humorous at half past four in the morning. What would you call me if you came home and caught me in bed with your best mate? What would you call me? I said, a lesbian. <laughs> she said, well, soon you come home one night and caught me in bed with a bloke. What would you do then? I said, I'd probably kick his guide dog. <laughs> now that can slaughter. But at quarter past five in the morning, she started to get her own back. She shot up in bed, she said, quick, here comes my husband. And me like a prat jumped out the window. <laughs> now that's me. <laughs> and then last Sunday morning, she started to have a go again. Because I, I got up on Sunday morning about 11 o'clock. And it looked quite nice out. So I left it out. And... <laughs> She said, come over them windows, people think I married you for your money. <laughs> so we went in this restaurant, I said, do you serve crabs? He said, yeah, but sit in the corner so nobody can see you, like, you know. And... <laughs> well, the waiter come over, he said, hello. He said, do you want for a van? I said, yeah, I'll have a soup, the wife wants a prawn cocktail and we'll have two crab salads. Look here, man. Well, the waiter went, he come back and he's got his thumb in my soup. I said, that's not etiquette. He said, no, it's tomato. I said, no, etiquette, you got your fucking thumb in my soup. He said, I know, and before you start shouting, I've been to a doctor. He told me I've got arthritis in my thumb and I've got to keep it warm. I said, well, you want to stick it up your ass? He said, I do when I'm not serving anybody. <laughs> I'm going to tell you one true story about a colour fella who went to the doctors. He said, Doc, he said, I, I, I've, I've got a trabant pian. He said, you got a what? He said, I've got a trubbin pian. I said, what do you mean you've got a fucking trubbin pian? He said, well, it's trubbin, you know, trubbin, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> oh, trubbin. He said, that's what I said, trubbin. He said, well, how long has it been trubbin? He said, well, it's been trubbin for about two, three years. He said, well, get it out. He said, get what? Oh. I said, your penis. He said, what do you want to look at my dick for? He said, well, I want to have a look at the trubbin. Oh, he said, it's not my dick that's trubbin. It's my forehead. Oh, he said, you got a headache. He said, no, this, I'm a trubbin pian. I, I, I tried some of them hedomadex and this is still trubbin. He said, well, it sounds like something's wrong. He said, I'll give, I'll give you a tablet. It should get rid of it. If it doesn't, you'll come back and see me in the morning. So the following morning, he's back. He said, doc, he said, that trubbin pian's worsera. He said, there's no such word as worsera. He said, the can is, I just said it. He said, no, it doesn't mean anything. He said, it can do worse. When it's worse than when it was worse, it's getting worse or uh. He said, well, it's obviously there's something wrong. He said, I'll give you a note, send it down to the hospital. So he sent it down to the hospital, he had an x-ray. Doctor said, come in, Ram Sammy. He said, um, <laughs> he said, you have created medical history. He said, in, 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 in what, what, what way, yeah? He said, well, you've got a penis growing out of your forehead. He said, don't be silly, you can't have a dick coming out of your forehead. I've already got my dick, I can't have a dick coming out of there. I won't be able to wear my woolly hat. <laughs> he said, you'll have to cut it off. He said, you can't cut it out, it's attached to your brains. He said, well, what's going to happen? He said, well, it'll just have to grow. He said, well, what will it be, a lump looking like a dick? He said, no, it will be a dick. And it'll match your dick below. He said, but I've got a ten-inch chopper. <laughs> he said, you mean every morning I'm going to look in the mirror and see this big dick sticking out of my forehead? Oh, no, he said, you won't see it. He said, I won't see it. He said, no, he said, your balls will be hanging down in front of your eyes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, before I go, and I have got to go, because I've got to get up early in the morning, I've got to bite the postman, because the dog ain't well. And, uh... <laughs> before I go, ladies and gentlemen, I'd really and truly like to thank you, because without you, we haven't got a show. Could they put people away for talking to tables and chairs? <laughs> If any of my jokes are upset anybody, I'd like to say this from the bottom of my ass. Getting good job, I don't know. <laughs> if you haven't enjoyed me, when you wake up in the morning, tell your old friends about Jimmy Jones. If you haven't enjoyed me, don't give me bother to wake up. <laughs> couple of words of advice. If you're drinking and driving, do make sure you have a car. <laughs> Mine I drive because the statistic state, in this area alone, there's a gentleman being knocked down every two minutes of the day. And he's just about boxed off a bit, I'll tell you. <laughs> Today in the local hospital, a doctor was walking through the walls and this nurse stopped him. She said, doctor, she said, what am you doing with that suppository behind your ear roll? 
He says, some bum's got my biro. <laughs> about a fella in London going to open up in a, a, a piano bar. He built this beautiful piano bar. But he couldn't, you know, advertise for a pianist. And anyway, this bloke showed up and he rattling away on his piano. Absolutely wonderful. Songs he'd never heard. Beautiful, beautiful songs. So the guy's gone up and he said, you're marvellous. Absolutely wonderful. Where did you get these songs? And he said, I wrote them. He said, well, have you got them recorded? No, 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 no. He said, they're beautiful. Why haven't you got them recorded? He said, I can't, can't think of any good names for them. He said, well, you played two or three times. What's the name of the first one? First one is, don't fucking like your stick it up your ass. <laughs> well, he said, you can't name a song there. No wonder they won't print it. He said, how about the second one? Fucked your mother and your daughter, and I fucked your dad and all. <laughs> oh, he said, you can't name songs like that. No wonder they won't record them. He said, look, he said, you've got the job. He said, but let me, he said, what I'll do, he said, I'll write a sheet up on the wall there, on, on the piano, with all names. Anybody comes and asks you what the name of the song is, just read one of these names off. No, he said, oh, that's a good idea. He said, right, you've got the job. Big opening night. Piano, grand piano on the little stage, curtains all round and everything else. Beautiful. He started playing, load of shit, crap. He said, the governor's come. I said, what's the matter with you? What's the matter with you? Oh, he said, you've, you've, you, you, you started too quick. He said, that's something else with me. He said, I, I've got to have a wank, otherwise I can't fucking play properly. It's a bit of a fucking hang up. He said, what, you've got to have a fucking, he said, yeah, I've got to have a fucking wank. He said, well, draw the curtains, have a fucking wank, he said. Can't have you playing fucking music like that. So they drew the curtains and he's had a fucking wank. Started playing fucking wonderful again. Fucking beautiful. <laughs> Ten minutes, this bloke's got up, he said, you play like an angel. Absolutely like an angel. He said, but do you know your pricks out and you've got spunk all down your trouser leg? <laughs> he said, know it, I'll fucking row it. <laughs> Honestly, when I tell people true, true story, are you all right? If she faints, put her head between her legs. Make sure she ain't got a fag on, though. No. You talking about that? I'm doing the summer season, this is no lie. I'm doing the summer season out in Menorca. This is no lie. Anybody ever been to Menorca, they'll know where I am. I'm working in a place called Sombu. And for those people who have never been to Sombu, let me explain it. It's got a beautiful white silver sand beach, which is beautiful. But down one end, they've got all the nudes. They're allowed to sit out there in the, and it's really a fun. Have you ever been? Yeah. Talk to Jim. Have you ever been? We, you should see him. You go down there and you see these dirty old bastards laying out there in the sun and they've now got a Roger on. <laughs> and they stand up and bounce around and the knobs going up and down. And they run into the water and the cold water touches their feet and they, their knob goes jump straight back in the bollock <laughs> bag. But I was there last week, and the DJ came and he said, Bird on the beach, start a bollock naked. I said, it's a nudist beach. No, he said, it's the first English bird. I said, how do you know she's English? Not a hair on her fanny. <laughs> Completely bald. And you do ask women, you women over here do that. Because when you go down, they're all Germans laying there with fucking messes of fucking... <laughs> Holy air. And even when they've got a cozy on, they don't tuck them into it. They leave the fuckers hanging out of start. Scrappy bastard. You feel like dabbing over their ears and flinging them off your sandwich. Fucking scrappy bastard. There's no need for that. You know how to get rid of pubic ears, don't you? Anyway, now, I... He said, she's dropped off to sleep, the legs have gone open, you can see the whole crease. 
So, and you women do do that. You don't know that, but you do. You drop off to sleep and your muscles go and the legs go open and the air gets in and you start... <laughs> you fucking do! Well, we decided to go and have a look at this fanny. 24 of us. I got there first because I had running pumps on. I said, I thought you said this was bald. It's got a mass of black curly hair. He said, no, nah, I ain't look. And all the flies flew away. Now, I... now, I do something like that and I immediately say, ooh, he's a sexist. He's having a go at us. And I've got to say, you women, I'm not a sexist. I never ever could be. And I've got to say, you look very, very charming, most of you. <laughs> no, all of you, you all look very, very nice. But you are lovely, but you are... Be honest, you are strange fucking creatures, aren't you? <laughs> you fucking are. I mean, you give milk and don't eat grass, don't you? <laughs> I mean, you can bury a bone and don't even get your chin dirty. <laughs> now, I'm not explaining that. No. A bloke, elderly fellow, has given his wife a little licking. He said, this don't taste too good tonight, love. He said, something fucking wrong with you. She said, that's me arthritis. <laughs> fucking arthritis? She said, well, before I had arthritis, I used to wipe me arse that way, but now I do it this way. <laughs> This is true. A lady is in the hospital, she's had a bit of a heart problem. And, but they noticed every time they gave her a blanket bath that her heart problem became normal. So they thought, well, maybe we'd be able to do some of this. So they sent for her husband. And they said, look, we've done this and we think your wife's heart could be attached to, you know, some movement there. We think if you had sex, it. Nah, fucking ain't having none of that, is that? <laughs> fucking years since I've fucking done anything like that. What, in a fucking hospital bed? All you fucking people watching. <laughs> they said, well, how about oral sex? A, a, a bit of oral sex. We'll draw all the curtains and we'll put the monitors outside so we can keep a fucking look at it. He said, oh, oral sex, is it? Oh, right, they said, I'll give that the go. So they draw all the curtains, put the monitors outside, and the heartbeat started boom, 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 boom. Right fucking regular, boom, 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 boom. About 15 minutes. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> fucking pull back the curtains. He's standing there doing his flies up. He said, what happened? He said, I think she choked on it. <laughs> now. <laughs> there. Lovely. This young boy went to the doctor and said, he said, I'm having a bit of trouble with my sex life. And he said, what's the problem? He said, well, I can't, sort of can't hold on to it. it phew, it's fucking gone. So the doctor turned and said, well, I have got a cure for you. He said, but uh, you've got to work at it. He said, what's it? He said, well, go down to your sports shop and buy a starting pistol. And as you feel yourself coming, just fire the gun. Bang! It'll make your nuts go very tight and it'll hold you back and you'll be able to shake for about an hour. He said, I fucking tried that. So he went down and got himself a fucking sports car. Hit it under the fucking pillar. Got into bed that night and she fancies a bit of a 69. He thought, yeah, I'll have a fucking bit of that. <laughs> so she's up on top and he's giving out. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> and he goes, that's turned you on it, you dirty cat. <laughs> so he can feel himself coming, so he reached out for the gun. Anyway, back to the doctors. So the doctor said, how are you? He said, not very well. He said, did it not work? Oh, he said, it fucking worked. He said, it worked. He said, it fucking did. He said, it wasn't very successful. He said, what? He said, what? He said, I did what you fucking told me. She fancies a 69, I'm fucking there giving it. <laughs> 
I reached for the gun. Bang! Shitty shit all over my face. <laughs> she was bit an inch off the end of my knob. And a bloke walked out of the wall, bro, saying, I won't do it again. I fucking won't do it again. About a young nun. This is true. She got morning sickness. So they sent for the doctor. So the doctor examined her and uh, got the mother superior and he said, she's pregnant. He said, she can't be. She's been here for 10 months. He said, well, I'm telling you, I'm a doctor and she's pregnant. So the mother superior said, well, there's something wrong here. Could be Jesus being born again here. <laughs> she said, right, okay, leave it to us, doctor. She said, this is an internal problem. So I got a young girl in, she said, now, I've got to ask you some questions, which I don't know the answer of. Uh, what do you know about a dick? She said, oh, I don't know anybody about that man. <laughs> she said, no, a penis. She said, oh, I don't play piano. <laughs> she said, you're asking me the same questions Father O'Donoghue asked. Father O'Donoghue? You've seen Father O'Donoghue? Yes, he's been coming to my cell first thing in the morning. And he explained my mind and asked me about uh, a penis and... and and then he told me about my body, not to worry about these. He told me they would be called titties and not to worry about. And he told me all about my, my gates of heaven. Gates of heaven? What gates of heaven? <laughs> Down here, it's getting hair on it. It's got gates of heaven. And, and he showed me the key. Fucking key. <laughs> Where did he get the key? She said, well, he lifted up his, and he had this big long thing with a cherry up thing on the end. And two swinging nuts. And he told me if he inserted the key, I'd have eternal life. She said, the fucking dirty bastard. He told me that was Gabriel's on. I've been blowing it for 15 years. <laughs> but I had a feeling this old woman was getting a wide light portion from somewhere. So he's looking for a detective. And this bang on the door one night, as he's fucking China me, he said, hush ha. He said, no thanks. <laughs> no, he said, hush ha. Me Wang King, famous Chinese detective. I said, Wang King? He said, you'll never get a fucking job with a name like that. Be up market, change your name to Master Bates. <laughs> he said, me here, you, you look for a blood lamb laughter colour. He says, as a matter of fact, he said, I am. He said, I've got a feeling my old woman is getting a portion of Belmont from somewhere. And I want to follow. Oh, okay, sir. Me take a job. Cost you 50 English plants. He said, all right, he said, you can come back here any night at nine o'clock, because the old woman's putting her mum to bed next door and you can talk to me. Okay, sir. Following night, nine o'clock, <coughs> open the door, she said, hush, don't matter about your ass, what you found out? <laughs> he said, so you leave house seven floaty flies this morning, wife leave house at eight o'clock, hey, get to club, go to big building, press platinum, get in. Me cannot get in, 50 quid. Should you piss off? He said, I want to find out whether she's getting a fucking portion of velvet. Okay, so me cut out with a class. Never saw it for four weeks. Fucking bang on the door one day. Open the door, and she's fucking charming. Covered from red to put in fucking bandages. Fucking arm and a sling leg. He swam to you and said, four weeks ago, you leave house, have a floor day for life. Wife leave house, eight o'clock, her get clapped, go to big tree. A, 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 a house, plenty of fucking get in, me cannot get in. But big tree, me climb tree. First floor, wifey not there. Second floor, wifey not there. Third floor, fucking big tree. <laughs> Third floor, wifey there. She with man. She kiss man, man kiss wife. She go, go man. Man, take wifey's blouse off. Plum. Wifey, take man's shirt off. She go, go, what fucking happened then? Wifey, roll up man's underpants down. Take out big dick, try to eat it. Oh. <laughs> go on, go on, go on, what fuck it happened then? Man, roll wifey's knicker down. Him talk to Fanny, he said, hello, hello. <laughs> he said, go on, go on, go on, what happened then? He said, man, play with wifey. Wifey, play with man. Me play with me, fall out of fucking tree.
A true story I'm going to leave you with tonight. And about a fellow who went out for a Christmas drink. Went walking in a pub. And his mate said, it must, must be Christmas. He said, yeah, it is. He said, I was coming out Christmas. He said, don't you drink during the year, Harry? No, nah, he said, I can. The wife said, I'm going out any night I like. But you know what women are like. They say to you, go out, enjoy yourself. But they don't fucking mean it. Because <laughs> on Saturday morning, they've already down your pocket, see how much you spent. <laughs> and then you get all the fucking snidey remarks, have a fucking good time. <laughs> Fuck all on that telly, sat here on me fucking arm. You're ashamed of me, you never fucking invite me out of your fucking life. He said, and you get all the fucking backbite, and he said, and you feel guilty, you've got to go and borrow a bunch of flowers and that. He said, don't. I don't go out. He said, you don't do it right. My old woman tells me to go out. You want to do what I do. He said, well, what do you do? He said, what I do, I get home at night, I let myself in very, very quietly. I strip off, start bullet naked at the bottom of the stairs, I come upstairs on all fours in the bedroom, do they up from the bottom, two big toes, I give them a <laughs> straight up, lips of the fanny open <laughs> and she loves it he said she invites me out, she says go out you want to do that he said now nah, fuck it I said not go out now <laughs> dirty bastard I fucking couldn't do that now, nah, dirty kid <laughs> Eight pints out you thought, I might give that a fucking try tonight. <laughs> Only oh, met himself in very quietly, stripped off, start naked, up the stairs on all fours, in the bedroom, two big toes, oh, straight up, lips are funny, up, la, 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 you go, oh, the little man in the boat and give him a squeeze, and la, la, la. <laughs> 15 minutes he's licked this fanny, he thought, fuck it, I'm going to have to wash my face. <laughs> I'm walking in the bath and there's his wife sitting on the pan. I said, where the fuck do you come from? Said, Shh, don't make a noise, you'll wake mum. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Good night, God bless. I'll see you again soon. Bye bye. But anyway, this Sunderland supporter, his name was George Cannell, and he missed a penalty. And all the Sunderland supporters went, get him out. <laughs> and I thought, I didn't like that. <laughs> so I had this word Cannell for years, but my video company said, if you carry on using Cannell, you're going to finish up with a 15-year-old certificate. So, Cannell changed to fuck. <laughs> But it is an everyday word now, isn't it? I mean, some very famous people used it as their dying words. For instance, who said, that's not a real fucking gun, is it? <laughs> John Lennon, he actually said that. And who was it said, what the fuck was that? The mayor of Hiroshima, he said that. I personally think there are far worse words taught our kids. There's a word in the dictionary I'd have it taken out, killed. Horrible word, killed. Final. Don't you think kills a terrible word, mother? Speak to Jim. I mean, you should have been killed off act. <laughs> are we getting an answer? <laughs> you might as well fuck her tonight then, Governor. Well, as I said, I don't, I don't leave anybody out, and, I, and I'm not a racialist or anything. Oh, I've got to tell you a true story. <laughs> Fucking this, this is what I've heard of it. I mean, I've, I just recently got married, and, and my old woman, she's a bit of a funny fucker, but she, she's all right. A bit fucking thick. And I'm not saying she's too fucking thick, but I wasn't very well, so I said to her, phone the doctors. So she said, come back, she said, to her, it ain't going through. I said, oh, give us the fucking phone. And I said, what's the number? She said, 0800 1700. I said, that's not enough fucking numbers. I said, where did you get it from? She said, off the surgery door. I said, that's a fucking opening now, Jessica. <laughs> She phoned me up the other day, she went,
like she's an old church hospital. Just, uh, yeah, just she directs people. She found me up and said to me, uh, come and get me, I'm turning this job in. I said, why is that then? She said, harassment, sexual harassment. I said, I'll oh, come and fucking thunder. And so she was only one fucking bloke. He keeps coming up to me and saying to me, your hair smells nice. I said, well, that's not fucking sexual harassment. She said, he's a midget. <laughs> This is true. I put one in a tattoo artist and said, excuse me. If anybody's just walked in, I'm fucking acting here. He said, um... And let me enlarge on that a little bit more. I could never be a puff. And let me enlarge on that. Because I played a charity game of football a few months ago. And it was quite funny. I got kicked and I went down and I finished up with a pain here like you couldn't believe. Well, they've dragged me off because all they do is that cold water and that ice spray. Well, my knob is small enough as it fucking is. <laughs> so they've got me in it and I can't get rid of this pain no matter what they do. So they've finally got this doctor in. And then he done it in a word. <laughs> Indian, I think he was. Now let that double look at your mother down there and there and there. I said, let me what up where you were there. He said, yeah, I've got 12 widgets, but I don't use it as a rule. It's my mum and folks, I never had an arm. She's lived me out of the frame a bit. You won't see the state of my sisters. Anyway, what I was going to say, no, no. You just know where that dirt and then don't do it. Then just lay on your side and put your leg up there and, and, and make yourself not think of the bird. <laughs> well, without a buy or leave, he sticks the biggest finger on his hand <laughs> at my arse. <laughs> now, what that told him, I don't fucking know. But the pain of what I'm going to shit in his hand if he don't know now. <laughs> and I'm lying right there thinking to myself, and these puffs say they are gay. I would be fucking miserable if I had this regular. And all that going in and out, I thought it was unnecessary, I'm telling you. <laughs> Do you know what? The more I think about that, that bastard had both his hands on my shoulder. I'm fucking sure he did. So, this puff has gone in a tattoo artist. He said, uh, how long does a tattoo take to get better? That was about six weeks. Oh, good, he said, my boss had gone away for six weeks. I'd like to tattoo something on my bum for him. Something nice. A bit butch. He said, what do you want, a snake? No, I don't want a snake. He said, about a nice rock wire. No, I don't want a fucking animal. He said, who's a hard person? He said, Lennox Lewis. He said, do you do him? He said, yeah, it's got him. He said, catch him, Lennox Lewis, down the cheek of his eyes. Oh, he said, half look good, he said, the other side looks bare. Who else is hard? So Mike Tyson. Go on, you do him, yeah. So he tattooed Mike Tyson down the other side. Six weeks, his boyfriend's come home and said, got a surprise for you. <laughs> Dropped his trousers and bent over. He said, what do you think of that? Oh, he said, that's me and you finished. I couldn't go out of you no more. He said, why not? He said, if you think I'm getting in the ring between them two, fuck <laughs> you. It's amazing, you know, where you do get stories from. And I, and I don't leave anybody out, I really do. You look ever so serious, my dad. You're not serious. You might have the dates wrong. <laughs> where are you from? Where? Bentley. I'd look fucking serious if I could. <laughs> no, there's nothing wrong with fucking Bentley. <laughs> fucking all you'd like. Mark me dead, wouldn't you? You'd have said somewhere else. But no, it's not, there's nothing right. And this is your husband? How are you, sir? All right. Have we met before? Yeah, yeah. Have you here? Uh, Brown Peter. Brown Peter? What <laughs> oh, fuck? <laughs> I can't take the piss here, that's one of my sons. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck are you doing sitting down there? You threw me down there, I don't know where the fuck the family gone. <laughs>
I've got the family with me tonight because uh, they, they come and see me work occasionally and this is one of them. I don't do a fucking lot of work over there. But I do, try, I do get around the country and I've got to tell you, I was in Nottingham. What a place Nottingham. Any of you young boys out there, you want a dirty weekend, go to Nottingham. What a fucking place. I pulled a bird in Nottingham and oh, you should have seen him. I thought, and I'm dancing right close to him. And he's dancing, I mean, the birds are number the fillers like fucking eight to one. And I'm dancing right up close. She said, you smell nice, what have you got on? I said, I've got an hard on, but I didn't know you could smell it. <laughs> I said, can I smell your fanny? <laughs> she said, no, you can't. I said, oh, it must be your feet. <laughs> We look at you women, and some of you have done that. You've really gone out of your way. You look very, very nice indeed. And, and I've got to say that we do talk about women as you women talk about us. But we have to be honest. When we talk about women, you are strange fucking creatures. You fucking are. Come on. You give milk and don't eat grass, don't you? I mean, you can bury a bone and don't even get your chin dirty. I'm not explaining that one, I'm just telling. And there's other things that you women do, and you all do them. I don't know why you do them, but you do. Nobody's ever been able to deny this, but why do women wake up in the morning with an idea in their head? And it's got to be fucking done today. Or yesterday, before they fucking thought about it. And you do do it. I mean, my old woman's done it to me. She woke up and said, we're going to decorate the bathroom. I said, it's tile. Get a bucket of flats, you lazy cat. <laughs> no, 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 she said. I want you to take me down B and Q or one of them. I want you to fit this in the B day. They're never so easy to fit in. I said, well, you fucking fit. <laughs> well, I don't even know what you're fucking talking about. She said, you do. I said, I fucking don't. Yes, you do. It's a thing that's shaped like a pan. And you, you fit it beside the pan. I said, I am not sitting in there having a shit with somebody else. <laughs> she said, no, it's for washing your arse. I said, that ain't a bidet, that's a flannel. <laughs> well, I ain't posh. I don't get out of the bath truck of piss, I tell you now. No, I don't. I piss in the sponge and squeeze it and think. And I'll tell you this, it's got rid of all her spots. I'm telling you. <laughs> I was in America. I've, I've, actually, I've only been home a fortnight from America. And I, I, I had a great time in America. And uh, I got this bird. I mean, they, they reckon the Americans, but this one was a bit fucking thick, I've got to tell you. Yeah. Because and we, we know, we're in a, in a car, and of course it's left-hand drive, so I'm sitting there, and I'm having a bit of a kiss and cuddle, and I, I said to her, sort of, you know, um, do, do you play with knobs? <laughs> she said, uh, what do you mean a knob? I said, well, I've, I've got a bit of a roger on. I said, roger, what's a fucking roger? She said, I've got my knob out. I said, yeah, what about that? Fucking okay, hell, she said, looks like a dick. <laughs> Who's a fucking dickless cat cat? I said, have, have you ever played with one? She said, no, not really. I said, well, just put your hand over the fucking hole. So she said, I put my knob in her fucking hand, meant to let me know. And uh, she said, what am I doing now? I said, well, fucking shake it. She said, I said, no, fucking shake it. She said, like what? I said, well, what? Like, you were shaking the bottle of tomato ketchup. She said, you should want it. I said, yeah. So she's gone. <laughs> I'm telling you the fucking truth. This is the truth. I was in the toilet a few weeks ago. And a fucking black boat came in. 
And he's got a fucking shotgun under his arm and he's fucking nowhere. And he said, what are you going to have? That or that? Fuck the fucking life out of me. I went out, my mate said, you look fucking white. I said, look fucking white. I said, did you see that fucking black bloke? He came in there with a fucking gun and he's snobber. And he said to me, what are you going to have? The gun or the knob? He said, what did you say? Did you hear a band? Ladies and gentlemen, uh, as I said, we, we're coming to the end of the video. It's going to be the very last video that I will do, uh, and that's for sure. I'm trying very, very hard to retire. But when you come to the Circus Tavern and you see people like you that have bothered to come out, buy tickets, and see the show. Oh, get him out.